We're going to go ahead and start with our race runner-up, Eric Jones. He's the driver of the number 20 Freightliner Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Eric, you ran a heck of a race here tonight. Uh, led a lot of laps. Certainly we're contending for the win. And even there at the end, would not let off Brad Keselowski. So congratulations on a great showing here tonight. Uh, just talk about how you thought things went. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, you know, it was a good night overall with, uh, with the, whole, the whole 20 group and um, getting the Freightliner camera up front and, and in contention to win at the end of the day. You know, I, I didn't know at the beginning of the day if we really had a car that was, was good enough to compete with uh, the 54 at first and then the 22 obviously came on pretty strong after the first couple pit stops. And, um, you know, we fought up there and, and track position was so big all night. We were just kind of trying to get some kind of clean air, whether it be, um, you know, in the lead or, or anywhere else. And uh, me and Wheels decided to take two there at the end. And obviously it played out well on the restart for getting the lead and getting that clean air. And I, I knew if we could get the lead, we had a shot. And, um, you know, unfortunately, a lap car just slowed us up enough that uh, the 22 slid on past. And, you know, it was pretty hard to pass all night. And I wish we could have got back around them. But uh, we were both fighting our cars pretty loose. And it was fun to race with them. But, um, you know, I wish we could have been uh, still hold them off at the end. Questions for Eric. If you have one, raise your hand. Anybody in here have a question? Stan, and then uh, we'll go to Chris. Yeah, Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. Eric, was it, was it easy to catch back up to Keselowski, but like you said, just because of the way your car was, you really couldn't get in position to pass him? Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree with that. Um, you know, once he slid by us, he, he gapped us by about four cars, and it was easy to, you know, run right back up to his bumper. But once we were about one back, it was like, you know, we've kind of stalled out here. And it was tough, and it was like that all night a little bit for us. You know, I, a little bit of the nature of the track, the nature of the car just, you know, kind of prevented us from doing a whole lot. And it seemed like the line stayed fairly low all night, and we weren't really able to get off that middle groove, and that makes it, you know, pretty tough to pass anywhere. So I was just trying to get on his left rear and loosen him up, loosen him up as much as I could, but I couldn't quite get close enough to do it. So um, I started burning the tires up with about three or four to go and kind of ran out of tire, especially front tire, and just couldn't really do a whole lot at that point. But uh, fun racing with him. Go to Chris. Chris Nightcatchfence.com. Eric, were you surprised that a veteran of David Starr's caliber made that type of move with the leaders coming? Well, you know, it's a tough situation. I mean, um, you know, a lap car is not in an easy place, I, I'd say, at any part of the day. And, you know, obviously you'd like a lap car to commit to a line, whether it be the top or the bottom. And David had committed to the top all night until that point. Um, you know, if he's going to commit to the bottom, you know, do it on the straightaway. But, you know, you, you're in a tough pos position as a lap car. He committed to the bottom, honestly. Just I didn't know he was going to go there. And, um, you know, it hurt us. But, it, like I said, you're in a tough position as a lap car, and it's, it's really hard to do what you need to do. He stayed at the bottom, rolled the bottom. Uh, I just didn't expect him to go there. Any additional questions for Eric Jones? Well, Eric, congratulations on a uh, strong showing here again tonight at Kentucky Speedway. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, joining us now is Daniel Suarez. He's our top Sunoco Rookie of the Year candidate. Also had a strong fourth place showing here tonight, in the 15th annual Kentucky 300. Daniel drives the number 18. Eris Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Daniel, congratulations on another strong showing. You keep knocking on the door to get that uh, first win. And uh, obviously, the more you knock, it's going to fall down soon. So congratulations. Talk about your race here tonight. Thank you very much. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank uh, everyone in Joe Gibbs Racing because because they've been doing an amazing job with me, uh, you know, they 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 don't give up with me in my my rookie, sometimes my rookie mistakes in my learning process. Uh, it's been it's been good, uh, you know, being with them and uh, learning from from everyone, uh, and I'm very proud of them as well because because my car was really fast. Uh, we we run all night long in the in the top five, which which I think is great. Um, and I'm very happy about that. Uh, one more time, our Toyota Camry number 18, Aris Juniper Cell, it was it was very strong. Uh, yesterday as well, we had a, a strong run in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. So overall, a, a pretty solid weekend. Very good, Daniel. Thank you. We'll take questions. Let's start with uh, Jim Utter. Let's go start with Jim Utter. We'll go to Kelly, and then we'll go to the press box. 
Jim Utter, Charlotte Observer. Daniel, do you feel like uh, it seems like uh, lately that you have been gaining more confidence or you look more comfortable out on the track racing with people the longer, the more experience you get? Do you feel more comfortable uh, as every race goes by running, particularly running up front with the leaders? Yeah, I really think that uh, I just feel different uh, from, not, from right now to going back to the beginning of the year in February, March. I just feel like a different driver. I feel like uh, I have been learning a lot. I, I, I have a lot of stuff already on my head. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of stuff that we learn on the first, on, on, on the first few months of the year. Uh, or really we keep learning a lot, it's unbelievable because every single week and I feel like we, l we learn new things, which I think is great. Uh, but, uh, but for sure, I really feel more confident running in the front, running with all these guys and, and not just running with them, learning from, from all these guys. Uh, because uh, I, I really feel like we, we are learning from the best drivers. So, so we, we have to keep it up and, and hopefully, hopefully in one, one race we can, we can make it happen with a, with a, with a win. Let's go to Kelly, right there, Kelly, right behind you, and then we'll go to the press box. Kelly Crandall with PopularSpeed.com. Daniel, you repeatedly have said this season, that seemingly every time we see you, that you thank Joe Gibbs Racing for everything that they continue to do for you. Can you elaborate on who's working closely with you, what exactly they're doing? Is it feedback? Is it going over video? What's going on at JGR that you believe is really helping you? Well, uh, it's, it's everywhere, but uh, Steve D'Souza, vice president of the of the NASC, of the Xfinity series, of the Xfinity side uh, of the Xfinity program, he's been helping me a lot. Uh, Kyle Bush with a lot of advice, with a lot of tips, with a lot of uh, onboard camera, a lot of homework that I, I I have to do before each race because because most of the racetrack that I have been this year so far is my first time ever. So sometimes it's hard to adapt fast and, and you have to do some stuff before to try to, to, to adapt. So, so I think that has been helping me a lot. Uh, Coach Gibbs, he, he's been very, very helpful. GD Gibbs, everyone. I really think that uh, they are a great organization. They, they are a great race team, but they are even better uh, group of people, group of family, because as you guys know, my family is not here. My family is back in Mexico. So, so they, they are pretty much my family in the racetrack, out of the racetrack, and, and, and er, er, I mean, every time. Let's go to the press box. Question for Daniel Suarez. Lee Spencer Motorsport.com. Hola. <laughs> Where are you at? They're in the oh. press box. They're um, in the press box. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, when, is, is considering that you've moved from smaller tracks to, to bigger tracks over the course of this year as part of your learning process as well, do you think patience, just you know, acquiring the type of patience it takes to run bigger tracks, longer races, has really helped you with your game? I think, I think it's, it's been helping some, uh, for sure. Uh, in the beginning of the year, I feel, I feel way, way more comfortable on short track racing than, than mile and a half and super speedways. Because when, when I was racing the KNN series, the KNN Pro Series East, um, I, we, we used to race half mile, one mile racetrack. So, so pretty much my background came from, from short track racing so far. So, so this, this pretty much is my first year uh, on big racetracks. Uh, but you know, that, I feel like that was in the beginning of the year. Right now, I, I, I really feel I'm feeling way, way more comfortable. I'm more comfortable on the big race tracks on mile and a half. I'm, I'm learning a lot about the aero, about uh, being high the speeds, and 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 I'm doing great so far. Uh, like I say before, Yogi Racing is doing an amazing job, teaching me many things and and trying to to keep up with me in my learning process. Let's come back downstairs to Chris Knight and then to Stan Creekmore. ChrisKnightCatchFence.com. Daniel, your parent, your, your mom was here this weekend along with your sisters. How important was it for you to have a good run with them here? And then New Hampshire next weekend, is that the place you feel like that you can finally get your first Xfinity win? Yeah, I'm talking about my family is great. It's actually this is the first time ever that my mom come to a race here in the United States with me. Uh, she used to come a lot of races back in, back in, uh, in Mexico, uh, and now is the first time for her being here in the States, and, and for sure it was excited to, to have a good run. Um, and as answer your question about New Hampshire, actually New Hampshire is one of my favorite racetracks. Uh, when, when, when I used to race in the NASCAR K&N Pro Series East, uh, that was maybe my favorite racetrack 
We used to be very, very strong every single time. So I'm really looking forward to, to be strong one more time next weekend. Let's go to Jim Mutter. Oh, excuse me, Stan and then Jim Mutter. Go ahead. Stan Creekmore with RPMTonight.com. Daniel, I've, I've watched you get more comfortable, but given the weather this weekend here and given the bumpiness of this track, was, was this race as demanding to get ready for as any that you've had this year? It, it was fun, actually. Uh, I, feel, I feel like we, we spent a lot of time at the racetrack doing nothing. So it was very fun to have my, my mom and my sister and, and you know, everyone of the team having fun and, and spending some time together. Um, but at the same time, I, I, I wish I, I, I couldn't be in the racetrack a little bit more because we, we just have one practice in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and we race. And yesterday in the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series, it was even worse. We didn't have any, any practice or qualify. We went straight to racing, which, which I think it was pretty fun. It was interesting. <laughs> but, uh, but overall, it, it was a pretty solid weekend, and I'm, I'm happy about it. Go ahead, Jim. Jim Mutter, Charlotte Observer. You mentioned earlier uh, about the team having to put up with some rookie mistakes. Do you feel like this far into the season that you have kind of passed that phase, or do you feel that there are still times, some sometimes that you're making, uh, mis you know, rookie mistakes? Well, uh, really, there are every single race. I feel like there are less less mistakes. Uh, actually, in this race, I feel pretty good about about those kind of mistakes. I feel like uh, we we didn't make mistakes on the pit road. We didn't make a lot of mistakes on the restarts and on the race run on the long runs. I feel pretty good about this race. Um, I we, we 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 couldn't finish we we couldn't finish a little bit better, but uh, the car was strong. Our Toyota Camry. Number 18, Aris Juniper Telcel was, was very strong one more time, and, and I'm very proud of everyone in Jogit Racing to, to bring this strong race car. Um, and overall, I feel, I feel like we, we are making little mistakes, and, and hopefully we, we keep learning and, and, and giving, you know, moving those mistakes away from us. Any additional questions for Daniel? Daniel, before I let you go, if you wouldn't mind, for all of our Hispanic uh, followers and f uh, fans of yours uh, across the globe uh, and the Hispanic media that follow us, uh, if you wouldn't mind, just summarize your uh, race here tonight at Kentucky Speedway. Well, bueno, eh, muchísimas gracias a toda, a toda la gente que, que nos ha seguido, que, que nos siguió en este fin de semana, no solamente hoy, sino también el día de ayer en la, en la categoría de NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. Un día un poco loco con, con, con la carrera, sin prácticas y sin calificaciones. Un resultado positivo. Nos hubiera gustado un poco mejor, pero un, un, un top 5 muy, muy, muy positivo. Y, y el día de hoy no fue la excepción. Eh, todos en, en Jogi Racing hicieron un excelente trabajo. El Toyota Camry número 18 de Harry Juniper Telcel fue, fue muy fuerte una vez más y, y se pudo rescatar otro top, otro top, top 5. Entonces, contento sobre, sobre el fin de semana. Sin embargo, hay que seguir trabajando para, para poder tratar de, de, de una, un fin de semana de estos. Las cosas se pongan de nuestro lado y, y por qué no llevarnos una victoria. Muchas gracias a todos por su apoyo. Daniel, thank you very much. Continued best of luck. Thank you.